Look at this. Bloody spectacular sunset. Top of Mount Gungun here on the Sunshine Coast. Come for a sunset shoot. I'm going to shoot uh, Glasshouse Mountains. Just back and behind here. Well, this is part of the Glasshouse Mountains too. It's another mountain over the uh, side here. But I've come to focus on these two back here. I can say that this walk started off quite pleasant through the sort of woodland forest at the beginning of the trailhead um, and I was sorely, sorely mistaken. Um, this was a hard walk. It's only one point something K but it's basically after the straight up and uh, my lungs were burning and so was my heart. So uh, I managed to get up to this summit and uh, well worth the uh, almost heart attack. Uh, when Captain Cook was sailing the East Coast, he noticed the Glasshouse Mountains from his ship and uh, they resembled, well, glasshouses back in England and hence the name the Glasshouse Mountains. How the Glasshouse Mountains came to be a Dreamtime story dates back thousands of years. So the Dreamtime story uh, goes a little bit like this. Uh, there was a father mountain, Tibrogargan, the mother mountain, Berawa, and the eldest of the, the children was Kunarin. Tibrogargan noticed one day that the rising waters, so he told his eldest son, Kunarin, to grab his mother, Berawa, who was pregnant at the time, to go for safety out west in the mountains, to avoid the flooding waters and he'll gather the other children. He looked over his shoulder and noticed his eldest son fleeing and not taking his mother with him. And this brought great shame to Tipragargan and Birawa. So Tipragargan ran after him with a nala nala, hit him on the back of the head. He brought great shame to the family and was never forgiven for that. After the floods had presided, they went back to the plains and Tipragargan faced out to the ocean to this day, never to look back at his son in disgrace. So that's basically the story, of, the Dreamtime story of these mountains. Oh, g'day. How you going? Finally made it. I'm on top of uh, Mount Lung Lung here, the Sunshine Coast. Ah, uh, the walker uh, was a killer. I read, uh, I've never been here before, so I read uh, some reviews online about the actual walk and everyone was saying, oh, that's only one point something K up here fairly easy walk oh, absolutely killed me but yeah, I've come up here for a sunset these uh, glasshouse mountains absolutely spectacular I don't know if you can see this, uh, the rays of light now hitting back in here um, finding composition is quite tricky up here you know you can do the classic shot of the mountains well for me I'm looking for these uh, rocks in the foreground here for some foreground interest and then leading you back into these mountains but yeah glorious spot I'm gonna set up and uh, take some shots so yeah this got this beautiful light now it's a little bit harsh but I'm bracketing for the foreground the mountain and then the uh, the sun up top there I've got no filters at all just bracketing uh, waiting for that sun to dip hopefully it catches those clouds but I think there's too many clouds on the horizon there to uh, make it go on fire but nevertheless beautiful streams of light now uh, better get a shot of that so. so yeah like I'm saying quite a lot of people up here actually 
uh, up on the rock here watching the sunset. Uh, quite a few behind the camera here. There's this old tree. Um, I'm going to try that too for a composition just over here. It's all uh, got these uh, spindly uh, branches uh, sticking out. So I'm going to probably try and get one of that. But it's, it's as far as composition goes, you're quite limited. I mean, that's your main subject back there. So you can either use all these rocks as your uh, foreground interest leading you into the image or just zoom in and focus on the valley below and the um, mountains itself. So I think I'll go over here and see if I can show this tree. A little bit windy up here, but uh, it's not too bad. So uh, yeah, I might sit up over here, see if I get a shot of this, um, this tree, dead tree leading you out. Uh, I watched the light come and go. I uh, stood here for a couple hours, oh, a good hour or so. And you can see the sunbeams uh, in the back, lighting the back mountain up, Mount Biawa. Uh, this is as good as the light got, unfortunately. Uh, I was at ISO 50, 1 20th of a second, F18. Uh, and then the storm clouds rolled in behind, killing all the light. So th these last two images I'm about to put up are probably the best images I came away with and uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with them, but I uh, really can't wait to come back here with some nice high cloud and hopefully it catches on fire. I just sat down here for a bit. Um, Clouds have rolled in now, quite heavy, dark uh, storm clouds, so all the light's gone flat. It's killed the scene. So I'm gonna chalk this one down to a recce, and I will be back here again for another shoot. Um, a lot of people up here, weekday, it's probably about 10, 15 people just up behind me here on the hill, watching the sunset. Well, there won't be one actually, because it's all behind black cloud. But a uh, yeah, lovely spot. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I said, I'll be back again. Hopefully I come away with a couple of good shots there. Uh, you would have seen them, so uh, comment below what one you like best, did they work? And uh, you could see it working with the sun just sinking behind those two mountains and then maybe catching the clouds of light. But anyway, I've got to get down this big hill, uh, back to the car before it gets dark. Thanks for coming along. Uh, have a good one, guys. Cheers, peace out, and I'll see you on the next adventure.